That's your second assumption. So the decision rule is, will a special order generate additional operating income? If yes, we accept it. If no, we reject it. And it will be done on a relevant basis. So here, let's do an example. Sunbelt produces 100,000 blenders a month, and they are at 80% of capacity. So what's their capacity? It's 100,000 divided by 0.8. Can somebody tell me what that is? And we got a calculator, please. 125,000. So we have 25,000 um, units of capacity. Our variable costs are $8 a unit. Our fixed costs are $400,000, which, because we sell 100,000 units, works out to uh, $4 per unit. And we sell them at $20 each. Sunbelt has an offer from Mexico company to purchase 2,000 blenders at $11 per unit. Do you do it? Anyone have a point of view? Would you do it? Because it's Mexico company and it's the, we don't do any other business in Mexico, we don't think it will affect our customer base. Do you do it? Who, who does it? Raise your hand. Who doesn't do it? Raise your hand. Who doesn't know? Who doesn't care? Let's find out. Okay, so you're going to compare rejecting the order with accepting the order, okay? So what's our, if you reject the order, your incremental revenues are zero. And if you accept the order, your incremental revenues are 22,000, which is $11 times 2,000 units. Yeah, that should be 2,000 units. So you'll increase your revenues by 22,000. If you reject the order, you have no incremental costs. Your incremental costs, which are your variable costs only, are 16,000, which was $8 a unit times 2,000 units. So you will be generating 6,000 incremental dollars for the company. So you would do it. Special orders, short-term decisions, and it's important that these be short-term decisions, less than one year, do not include fixed costs. They're not relevant because you're going to pay them whether or not you do this job. So essentially, if you have a positive contribution margin, you would move forward. So yes, you would accept this job. As everything else being equal, all the qualitative issues being equal. So this, is, this goes back to that very brief moment we did in chapter nine, talking about variable costing versus absorption costing. We know that for all legal reasons, you do absorption costing. But for decision making, sometimes variable costs are all that matters. They're the relevant costs. <laughs>